What does it mean to be creative? When I choose to be a moderator, it's my goal to make the focus on the celebrity and their relationship to the fans. To think outside the box. He said, well, you can't be all things to all people or something to that effect. You can't appeal to everybody. And I said, why the hell not? We sit down with artists, filmmakers, comedians, and performers of all genres to ask them eight simple questions on what makes them tick and what can we learn from their quest for creativity. It's time for your Creativity Podcast. I haven't done it alone for a while, so it's... It's scary, right? Yeah. It's tough doing it alone. It... it Ultimately, you you you're alone while doing it. No shit. You know, like you really are. No, you are. You know what I mean, though. Like, <laughs> you're, you're alone know. when you're alone. No fucking shit. <laughs> Johnny McKeon, everyone. <laughs> no one ever goes there. It's too crowded. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Welcome back, everybody. Those voices that you are hearing are <laughs> Sasha Bloom and Johnny McKee and our guests for tonight's episode of Your Creativity. How are you, gentlemen, this evening? I'm fantastic. How I, are you? I'm fine. I could be watching the Oscars, but Fuck I'm here. The Oscars. Fuck the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> I like to stay current. I like to stay current. How, but, how many of the films have you seen oh, of the nine? Let me see. I saw Manchester United just the other day. Uh I get why he's nominated for the Oscar. I can appreciate the performance, but overall, I didn't enjoy the movie. But you know, the monologue that he does—that you know—that helps him nail the nomination. I, I, I can see why, but I, I didn't like the movie. So yeah, that's what I've seen. Uh, yeah, that's it. I I tried to watch Arrival, but it, it, it didn't really keep my interest. Ar- Arrival wasn't bad. I enjoyed Arrival. I uh, I found the linguistics aspect, you know, intriguing, and uh, I enjoyed it. It was it was it, it reminded me a lot of like like kind of like a Christopher Nolan movie, like an Interstellar or something, but it just wasn't quite there. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. I don't know. I enjoy Amy Adams movies. So <laughs> <laughs> Amy Adams, I love Amy Adams. You don't like Amy Adams? No, I think she's fantastic. I don't know something about her. I just I enjoy I enjoy her work. Sunshine Cleaning, uh, you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> The Fighter, I mean, uh, uh, Leap Year, you know, she's, she's a, she does a lot of good movies. Uh, American Hustle, she was fantastic in that. Yeah, she, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you agree, Don? I do, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, How many I, Oscar I, movies have you seen? What's the last movie you saw? Me? Or yeah. Sasha? Um, the, the, this, this year, I only saw Arrival. I oh, okay. meant to go to La La Land. You're a big but, movie guy, though, aren't you? I know, but I, I hardly go anymore. We only go for like the big, you know, the big ones, the Pixar's, the Star Wars. The because let's be honest, there's a big difference between Oscar movies and movies people actually go watch. Yeah, you know, like no no one cares. Like no one watches it. Like I I want to see Moonlight eventually. You know, like I I still haven't even seen Birth of a Nation. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those. Yeah, I haven't seen them. But you know, I've seen like the the, the blockbuster or the you know, cheap horror. Like I've seen The Purge. I saw that one. Dude, The Purge is the greatest <laughs> movie series I've ever seen. I love The Purge. Dude, I, every year I get excited when they have a new one. They have a new one coming out, by the way. Nice. They're making another one. I, I, I'm, I, I want it to be like a Netflix series. Like I, I feel like you could just do that over and over and over. You could do like anthology style. Like, uh, yeah, kind of like that Black Mirror series. Exactly. And every episode is a something different yeah just basically. a different person See, i, I yeah. think that that's a movie that would have done a lot better 20 years ago when they gave more time to a movie mm-hmm. i think that you know once that thing hits the 90 minute mark you can almost see in their edits and the way they've designed it that they need to cut time because Definitely. they're not a huge budget movie so you know they probably controlling that budget quite a bit oh yeah they they make those films on a micro budget and that's why like it's yielding so much with the box office returns like like i mean like they made it was like three million nine million i think they made the last one for like nine million dollars and it cleared like 27 the first day well i think that you can get away with that type of budget now because you can buy four phenomenal cameras for a million dollars yeah that is true i mean you're talking world-class you know two hundred and fifty thousand dollar lenses You put four of those on a red camera, you're good to go now. Editing's almost free these days because it's not film. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Just nice and, yeah. 
I think I think film and television has really been hurt with the digital camera. Uh, everything's changed because of this digital camera. And I think camera. you see the Coen brothers and uh, Tarantino going back to film because it gives them control. I don't think you even need a director. I think so. I think one of the major problems, since we're going to be talking broadcasting today, I think one of the major problems in media today is camera operators thinking they're directors. Yeah. Especially the younger generation of photographers because they're not very talented. Um, they well, they're have, young, they're raw, and they haven't really seasoned it Yeah, yet. but they have this incredible essence of being full of shit. <laughs> and it, it sticks out so well, and you can smell it. Like, I'll go to all these sets and see these people running around, and it's like, that man is stunningly full of shit. Dude, right? I, I, I was in L.A. for three months, exactly. Mm, like, yeah. I was just knee-deep in it. Yeah. yeah. Gotta come up to the Rockies to clean out after that. Yeah, definitely. And the green screen, I think, have really killed movies, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the new Star Wars are so great because they've gone back to the the practical effects. Mm. You know, the prequels kind of it was all green screen. And it, I, that's why I put such a bad taste in everybody's mouth about Star Wars after those. When Disney bought Star Wars, did they buy George Lucas's production studio also, or just the intellectual rights to his movie? I, I, because I think that transition of if they didn't buy his studio, which I don't know if he'd sell that. Those patents and stuff, like $4 billion seems cheap to buy some of his editing patents. They might have had to rebuild a studio to even get close to his production because he is really one of those. Uh, well, I think ILM, yeah, ILM was not part of the deal. Yeah, yeah so yeah, it, it, I, would, it, I don't think he would sell it. It would make a lot of sense why those two movies, the Disney release kind of sucked just from that Star Wars effect that George Lucas had. Another point I wanted to make, you know, Kevin Smith, I like Kevin Smith and everything, but the the past few episodes of TV that he's directed, he said he's just been, you know, basically hanging out and having fun since those sets are so tightly, you know, they're, they've got their processes down to a T. Well, he's shooting CW shows, right? Yeah, he's he just finished an episode of Supergirl. Yeah. And a month or two ago, he did an episode of The Goldbergs, and he did... Episode of the Flash, not too yeah. long ago. Okay. So. Yeah. I've really never been a fan of Kevin Smith. Like I, really? I love the two characters of uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Jay and Silent Bob. The only movie that I've been impressed with him is was it Red State or Red? Yeah, uh, Red State. Yeah, Red State. That was. Mm. I that I was watching that movie and I was like, this is shot really fucking well. Yeah. And the script is like he's always been a good script writer. I think he's a little wordy and nosebleedy. I think Tarantino's like that too, but. I really liked Red State, and I w- it was nice and short. It was it was a beautiful movie, and it was completely different from anything he, he ever did before and and since. It's just... that's his best work, I think. Yeah, one could argue that he peaked right there. I I've been a big fan of Kevin Smith for a very long time. I first saw Mallrats in seventh grade. I, I it it blew me away. I'd never seen a movie like that before, where like they just talked about comic book stuff and they were just hanging out in the mall. But it was also like really wacky and kind of off the wall. But it was also like very real with the conversations that they were having. And then I went and watched Clerks, and I was blown away by that. And I, I've just been a fan ever since. Well, I have a rule. I have one rule when it comes to film and movies. Fuck Ben Affleck. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I will not watch a movie with Ben Affleck in it. He does some good movies. No, he doesn't. I don't know. Gone Girl was pretty good. Exception. Uh, the Town was pretty good. No. The, the Town wasn't good. No. I saw it. The Town's really good. <laughs> you should check out The Town. I haven't seen The Town either. Oh, you guys are missing out. You found him good in Good Will Hunting? I liked, I, I enjoy Good Will Hunting. I love that movie. I don't like him in it. it Leonardo DiCaprio would have done better in that movie, and he, I don't find him good. Yeah, it was supposed to be Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire doing that movie. That wouldn't have worked. No. Yeah, well, that, that's originally what they wanted to do, and when they sold the rights to the script, they made a stipulation that they had to star in it. Yeah, I think Matt Damon is. He, he makes really that good, movie. Yeah, I think yeah. he's a really good actor. Ben, ben they could have. I think they could have switched out with anybody with a Boston accent. I really like Casey Affleck in that movie. I think he cracks me up every time I see him <laughs> in every movie. Yeah, I, I I enjoy Casey Affleck. Like I do enjoy his work. They're saying he might win tonight. Yeah. Back to Oscar talk. Yeah, right? 
<laughs> Let's talk broadcasting. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's on the brain. You got me. It's on the brain. I heard someone on Twitter call it uh, the Democratic National Convention. And I thought that was fucking brilliant. That's really funny. <laughs> That's another thing that bothers me about movies is how left everyone is. Like, yeah, there's I can no see that. middle. There's nothing. There's a lot of lying going on in Hollywood with these actors. It bothers me. Well, it, it's it's tough because it's such an elite like society you know like they're built on exclusion like hollywood you know every day they reject thousands and thousands of people you know for roles for jobs for i almost said prizes i don't know why (laughs) i'm sure someone's missing out but no like (laughs) seriously like it's it's a place built on exclusion so it's kind of interesting for them to to talk about being you know inclusive and being and and doing more but i don't know i I don't want to disagree necessarily with what they're trying to accomplish either I don't know. It's a sticky situation. <laughs> they're their, their own. Ugh. They're their own oxymoron. <laughs> exactly. It's complicated. We've got this. So you haven't told your audience yet, but we have a show called Old Ute Radio. I was I was just about to mention that. And for like the first year and a half. Johnny would say after everything, like it was his capstone. <laughs> it's a sticky situation. <laughs> Drove me up the fucking wall <laughs> sounds like it's back oh man <laughs> it ain't back it, nah, well, it never went away i miss it man we used to talk three hours straight do you remember that live i loved it i loved it too i i that was my favorite thing about college was doing that like like doing all you radio like you know practicing like like i don't i felt like a real broadcaster even back then you know like like it, it just it felt <laughs> you used to get so mad at me <laughs> when i would put my feet up <laughs> You used to get so angry. I walked out of a live show because he put his feet up on the desk. Like, he would yawn. (laughs) It hurt. Like, I have a passion for radio and television and broadcasting, and I find it an art form. And I'd watch this big, dumb mouth breather (laughs) put his feet up and yawn while there's a fucking guest on. I I was was mortified. (laughs) Like, yeah, it, I I think it caused me to drink. <laughs> oh man, that I was just... the moment, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Oh man, part of yeah, part of it was just antagonizing Sasha. Like it, it was it really a little bit, a little bit. It was good radio. It was great radio. <laughs> it was all you radio. Oh, you're a cunning bastard. <laughs> I never took you to be that sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Man, no, I enjoyed those days, like having to film material, having to think about the show, having to structure it. Because now we've switched over to a more of a, a, a profile interview type show, which I enjoy doing as well, because that was a significant aspect. That we usually did our third hour as the interview hour in our show. And I, I, I really enjoyed those those days. I, I just I remember one of our earliest guests. Do you remember uh, Dwayne Perkins? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember uh, uh, we had Tariq on? Do you remember that t- that episode? So we had this rapper from New York. His name's Tariq Trotter. And yeah. he's one of the best unsigned artists ever. Like, why he's not posting his stuff on World Star Hip Hop, I don't fucking get. Yeah. But I've hit it. And you should go back and listen to it. It's a beautiful interview, except he couldn't hear my microphone. <laughs> like, KU was the shittiest studio I've ever seen. And the battles I used to have with not so much the director team at KU, Mm -hmm. but with the media department. Itself, yeah. Because KU, for the people that don't know or out of state, KU is the student radio station at the University of Utah. And it was on AM 730 for about 30 years. And a lot of good broadcasters had made their name and careers in Salt Lake, in different states, at a KU. And KU got closed down for a DJ having sex on air. Like, straight up blowjob and banging while the microphones are on on 7.30 a.m. In the student union. (laughs) (laughs) And there's no tape about it. it? No, but I would have done it. Like... It would have been on our best stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just looped that. <laughs> Let's go to break here. <laughs> but no, yeah, it, it was shut down and it was very difficult. Um, we we really had to build that from the ground up, you know, like it, it was. We weren't trusted. No. 
and they didn't like us. And it probably had, I don't know, like I tried, like I had to intern for a year before we started, which is really dumb. Like, it, and it made a lot of sense. Like I got really good there, and even though I wasn't the director, I was kind of in charge of the whole thing. Yeah, you knew what you were doing. Yeah, and I they never offered me the director job up at KU, but they'd asked a couple times. But I was, you know, working at ABC, and I fuck that. I don't have time to deal with that. So f- it it was for your degree, a, a BA yeah, in uh, journalism. communication, journalism. journalism. Yeah. So yeah. H- how did the radio radio part fit into what what you were doing? Like, was it? You know, you had... It was required for my program. I either had to join the Utah University of Utah Chronicle, which is the longest-standing newspaper in Utah, or I had to join KU. And I've, I've had a passion for radio my whole life. Like, when I was a student athlete in high school, the way I didn't go to parties on a Friday and Saturday night, and like, my excuse was the wake-up show was King, Tech, and Sway. Like, it was some of the greatest radio ever. Like, you in the pantheon of every radio that's ever happened, in my life, it's a top five show. And I'd listen to that for four hours and lay in bed because I had to be at practice at 6 in the morning, which means I had to be up at 4.45 and shaved and stretched and all that kind of shit. And so the chance, like, I, because I went back to school to be a print journalist. And when I heard there was student radio and I was like, wait, I have to choose between these two? I'm doing fucking radio. radio. <laughs> but I was really bad at it. Yeah. Like, I became the Sasha I was before I got to the University of Utah was a lot different because I got basically kicked out of the University of Utah for um, getting in a fight with a Hebrew studies professor. And so I left the school and I had a kid and I just, I left the U in a really bad place. And when I came back, I was like, well, I'm going to be the greatest journalist to ever live. So I se- I completely censored myself. I did the complete wrong thing. And I censored myself so severely that it actually, I think it screwed me up emotionally for a long time and intellectually because I wasn't being Sasha Bloom. I was this fucking shell of a man. Right. And yeah. that I really struggled with that at KU because there was a lot of stuff I'd want to do and talk about, but we weren't allowed to do it. And I think, did you notice that? Yeah, I felt the same way. It, it happens when you sign a, sign on to a, you know, go into an institutionalized form of education where you have to follow these rules and, you know, do what they say and, and we'll take these privileges away from you, like the threat of that. I, I totally understand and, that to a degree. And, I, I censored myself as well. I and, still deal with it. And I remember you weren't even a, you, a naturalized citizen yet. Nope. And so... There were stories where, you know, because we'd bring big, we had three hours to fill. So we'd right. do a news segment and, and we'd come in literally with um, a quarter inch of stacked paper yep. of news stories. Mm-hmm. Let's go through the news. And there'd be stuff that Johnny wouldn't fucking talk about because of his citizenship issues. Yep. yep. And that used to piss me off. Yep. But I think it was just a reflection of how scared and panicked I was. And I was, you know, I was like, he was reflecting off of me, and it. But KU was, you know, the, but there was a time where KU. I mean, we were smashing numbers. Yes. We were doing great. We were selling Subway sandwiches, and <laughs> free world burritos, and giving the big fuck you to the state, um, and having gay people on, and yep. transgender people on, and Sabrina Fulton, Quality Utah. Yeah, that went over well. Sabrina yeah. Fulton, uh, Trayvon Martin's mother. Okay, Got a lot of hate mail on that one. I got a lot of hate from the journalists in Utah because I was the only person to get an interview with her. Every company in Utah submitted an interview with her, and she chose me because she said I was polite in the letter. That was it. Wow. So all the other letters are probably very Oh, they're all formal and full of shit. And producers, especially in news, suck. (laughs) I fucking hate news producers. All of them. I, I don't feel as strongly. But. Except for Brittany Johnson. I love Brittany Johnson. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> but she's not a producer anymore, so I can go back to hating producers. But I think, that, I, think, I think it's an incredibly difficult job, and I think that you have to 
most people don't have good work ethics. And if you don't have an incredible work ethic, you're going to make bleeds at leads articles. And every story is going to be one dead on the freeway, one gunshot shooting, and a molestation in the bathroom. And that's your news. And it has nothing to do with the talent of your reporters or your anchors or your news director. If you get a news producer that's lazy and not creative and doesn't have much of an imagination, you're going to have a shitty product. And K Radio is a perfect example of that. We had a lot of managers that were either really good at being a secretary or really good at shaking hands with people in student media, but they weren't creative, they weren't imaginative. And even if they said they were, they weren't. And so a lot of people suffered from that because there was no hands-on teaching. Right. Like when I was having to be the teacher and teaching people how to edit and you know talking to people um, about how to do a better show and I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. But that's part of the magic of doing a student-run thing too. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of the tough thing because like with this, with this um, uh, major and with this field of study, it really is what you put in, like what you said. And, and everything that you do is determined by you know, the efforts that you put in. And you, you and I, like we, we, we figured it out together. You know, like like we started the booking of the guests. We we edited. We we'd have all these elements and bells and whistles to our shows. You know, it wasn't just like, like I don't know half of like. Remember, I remember when we first started. It was all people just talking about the Utes. Like it was all sports, and, or it was all like it wasn't. You know, like nobody was interviewing nobody, or they were just talking between music. It, like we had a sports show. It was like the morning show, and it right. had five or six people on it because they all sucked. And so it was the only way they could overcome and compensate with it. And so I, I don't know if you've been – for the people that haven't been to the university, we have this big building called the Student Union, and it's where the cafeteria is. And there's a bunch of beautiful lawns, and there's picnic chairs, and tons of shade for trees. And so they set up there, and they're doing a live broadcast be, – you know, the day or the day of, of a big Utah football game. And they spent two and a half hours talking about how Coach Kyle Whittingham should be fired, the head coach of... Yeah. You know how much fucking trouble KU got in for that? T- like, we tons. basically banned from the athletic department. And I don't know how it is now, but it was really... <laughs> it wasn't good for us. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> no, we hate you. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Doesn't matter. You suck. Yeah. Like, and th- I mean, that's kind of... Yeah, and those type of situations, you know, the show does itself because you've got, you know, the raw people right there, you know. Yeah. That, mm. It does its own work, you know. You just ask them a question and they go where they go and it leads to anywhere. But, but, One of my favorite things about the program was that it did afford us a lot of opportunities. Like, do you remember our uh, kiss-off that we had for Valentine's Day? <laughs> and you got a couple disqualified. Did I? Be- yeah, you did. Because you kept telling them to like uh, uh, lift their arms higher. Oh, I was fucking with them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they were so mad at you because they they were disqualified. It was supposed to be like for how long can you kiss? Mm-hmm. So it was a, it was sponsored by Kiss Sticks, this brand of a chapstick that was on Shark Tank. And what you do is you have two different flavors and you put them on your each lip. And then when you kiss another person with the opposite flavor, it has some type of sensation. Yeah, it was our third broadcast ever on OU Radio, <laughs> yeah. and we weren't prepared for this. No, and we, so it was a live broadcast. It and it full was event when we were on the seven thirty a.m. and it was being streamed all over in all the dorms and everything right. else. <laughs> and Johnny and I are there, and we're doing a live show. But there's a lady that basically has a microphone on a PA. She turned our audio equipment into a PA, and she wouldn't quit fucking talking. Yeah. Like, she's just, so we're doing She's that. making announcements, like, uh, about the event. Like, come on down and also come by the, the snack food that's on sale. And, and her pencils, voice. Pencils, um, uh, uh, binder paper. Like, she was, like, just listing things. Like, like they, they have stamps, uh, staplers. Yeah. And so, naturally, she and I got into it on air. Yeah. So, she's trying to talk and do all these instructions. And I have live reads that I have to do. Yeah. And I just start powering through her. Yes. Because her mic was attached to our broadcast, too. Like, right. we're paying her inside yeah. this room. But she's also on it. Connected in, yeah. It was... I don't think I have it posted up there, but I still have it. Oh. I might have to do that because we're awful well and i'm running around (laughs) working because you put me in a crowd like with a room full of people i'm gonna focus on those people like i was trying to make couples laugh i was like doing dumb stuff taking photos between like people's legs like selfies 
Like it was ridiculous. Like I was cringeworthy, uncomfortable. Like I have all these photos still, because <laughs> I had just left ten years of detailing cars and tinting windows and drinking PBR with redneck Utah rednecks, and literally this is like my ninth hour into the show. I'm with fucking Johnny McKeon <laughs> doing kiss sticks as a 31 year old fucking college student <laughs> you wanted to be a professional journalist you wanted like the hard-hitting facts I was the hard fucking news mortified. <laughs> i'm just doing a stunt boy i'm just a, a valentine's day stunt a boy, stunt boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, i loved it though I, I i i it was so fun like that's when i first really like discovered like i love doing events yeah and, and that's really it, it it came full circle for me for sure yeah because you are a promotional director now yes I'm a promotional cool. director and personality for Power 94.9, and uh, I also work with Alt 101.9, K-Bear 101. And you were at Broadway for a long time. Uh, yeah, I was. You were at ABC4. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A, I've done a lot. Yeah. got a resume. Yeah. So where, where did you guys meet in a class up at the U, or did you meet somewhere outside of that? Or Well, I had signed up for this KU radio, and for nine or ten months, I was waiting until someone graduated so I could get a show slot. That's kind of why you intern for a year. Is right. It also weeds out a lot of people. but um, It gets you a prime slot because back then you had to sign up for an hour. Like it was literally like you get and, 730 and to 6. there's 90 six. people showing up twice a year trying to get a show. Like it's, a, mm-hmm. it's kind of a big deal at the year. Like it's a big – even though a lot of people don't know about it on campus, for the students that are geared into it, it, it it's a hot mic. Like – Right. It's going to be competitive. I, I signed up my first year. They never even emailed me back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And so... You were waiting. Because yeah. I, I think both of you have known working with Utah Podcast Network and your whole media is that I'm really shitty with emails. Like, I'm a procrastinator because I don't like to type. Mind yeah. you, this is a guy that wants to go into print journalism. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had known for 60 days that I'm starting a show. I wait until three days before we go live to hit up Johnny McKeon because we had taken a class. We never really talked like he hung with the cool kids and I hung by myself because I was angry and miserable. Yeah. And he just kept talking in the fucking background while I'm trying to take the most detailed fucking notes you can imagine. It's video production with Craig yeah. Ward. And he's not showing up and he's about to fail out. Like literally, I'm not <laughs> right. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. No, no, no. I sat behind you. I. <laughs> Uh, you, you weren't in my 4.0 pedigree, young man. Uh, three seven, so. But I. Well, three six. Yeah, I graduated so with a. Th- that's yeah. a B minus for an what? A plus, bud. And so anyway. <laughs> oh, let's go grade for grade. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> and so you know he was. He always talked about how he was a comic. You know, we found out later that he was a open mic comic. But yeah. nonetheless, he was a comic, and he was funny and had a good voice and. It's like, dude, I got to do this thing at KU. I need a co-host. Yin. And five years later, yeah, yeah, we're still here. We're still here somehow. Yeah, no, it was no great. One's listening, but we're still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see that 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 that's why I I cherish Sasha because he, you were so underappreciated, like in life uh, by everyone by like no one realizes the scope of the level of work you you put in. And I've always appreciated and noted that from from the get go. I remember the amount of dedication you called me the night before. And you're like, hey, man, like, don't fuck around. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, I worked really hard to get this. You're not going to ruin this for me. I expect you to bring it. When it you know, and then, yeah, it's, it's Sasha. You've, I owe everything that I have to Sasha Bloom. I really do. And I remember I was sitting in the host seat running the boards. And literally eight minutes before we go live, I switch out and make him sit there. Because I was so I yeah. was panicked. Like, butterflies... From the pelvis bone to my heart, like I couldn't. I was so stage fright. It was it was a beautiful thing. It, it didn't bother me one bit. It, it, no. it still doesn't. Like I don't. I don't know. I don't think about it. Like I think about it, but I don't think about it. Like to me, I know that I'm talking to someone. I just don't know who. It's easier for me. So like I, I wasn't worried at all. Like it, it felt very nice. Like I like being at the board. Like I always enjoyed that. Yeah, oh. I, yeah. I think he's a good host. It's. I, I've had a lot of options in the past when he's quit a couple of times. Not quit but he had to leave the show for a certain amount of times and i've certainly even now i've had a lot of people hit me up to co-host with me and it's like johnny's great at being a host like i enjoy it like uh i thought rebecca was pretty awesome rebecca was great yeah she rebecca shalander she was when johnny left i think about episode 49 she 
we did it for another year and a half yeah. and we were doing two shows a week and he was booking the show like he never left but he left as a personality i guess right. and but no rebecca was a badass and when we closed up the show like she got offered a full-time radio job face of a station for iheart radio in salt lake city that doesn't happen no oh. Never and, does. And she turned it down. She turned it down. She's I, a badass. I still, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, hey, more power to you. More power to you. Yeah. She, yeah. I, I love that woman. Like, had I had a good head on my shoulders and been younger, I would have I would have tried so hard to marry that woman. Yeah. Like, she's one of the best people I've ever met. Very talented musician as well. Yeah. Beautiful singing voice. Yeah. I, 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 rec- I saw her video she did on Facebook recently of her singing. It was incredible. And she's got one, a mashup that's... I got tens of thousands of hits. Like we, I because she was so embarrassed. Like I'd play them out to breaks and yeah. anytime because she was so giddy, <laughs> uncomfortable, and it was just you know she was so hot, so it was cute, right? Like if it was something Johnny did, I'd be throwing shit at him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's the sexism that I have. Right? <laughs> I see a beautiful woman. Fuck, she can be uncomfortable and giddy and yawn and <laughs> you're, you're just you're, you're used to making beautiful women uncomfortable. <laughs> Back I don't care. You know? <laughs> but no, I, I've always called Sasha my sharpening stone because I appreciate the level of feedback that he gives. Like it's it's brutal, but it's everything that you need to hear, and it makes makes me a better uh, whatever you want to call myself, broadcaster, entertainer, personality. I don't know, but I know that without Sasha's feedback, without his direction, I don't know. I, I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today. I appreciate that. I, th- I think there's a. God, this is going to sound pretentious, but I think that there's a handful of people, young broadcasters in this market, that might not have the jobs that they have if I wasn't in their life, and not because I had influence with their hiring or have because I don't have that name, but what I do have is a passion for people to broadcast and. Right. I can go to Johnny and be like, dude, this is where you need to go. And you, if you do A, B, and C, you're going to have a phenomenal career. Yeah. And I think that that comes from being a father. I think that comes from reading a lot when I was young and probably being a Jew since there's so many Jews in media. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just something that's in our blood, I think. You know, I've had broadcasters in my family, not, not so much broadcasters, but artists and. I grew up in schools where everyone, like I went to school with Joel Silver's daughter and uh, the guy that did Airplane and all those guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've, you know, I went to school with uh, Drew Barrymore and tons of actors and tons of musicians' daughters. So, you know, when I was in high school, I I was on the stage team for Jackson Brown. You know, and so, so I've had this whole lifelong culmination of being around the arts growing up in California. And I went to an uh, art and theater school. I didn't, I was a kid smoking weed and telling them they're all fucking stupid for <laughs> being a photography major and being in theater. But had I known that having a cool image was a waste of time, I would have gone into theater or the arts. Um, but I, I had too much, too big of shoulders and too much pride to humble myself and, allow myself to be artistic see that's the hard thing is you really do have to humble yourself to like succeed at this because it's so easy to get a big head it's so easy to think that yeah i know what i'm doing i I, it's so easy to attach like a bunch of credits to your name and then think like that yeah you're the shit but no like you you have to really be humble and appreciate every time you crack that mic it's an opportunity that to, to reach someone and a lot of people forget that you know a lot of people don't take that seriously a lot of people like they don't show up or they don't come to like 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 that's important, you know. Like, like the value of this, it, it deserves to be respected and cherished, not just like thrown away. And it's why morning zoos, Dylan, fail and suck, and our obnoxious radio is because they don't have that insight. Like Howard Stern had that insight. Yeah, you're gonna hear cunt jokes and you know penis measuring contests, but you're also gonna have a real life discussion with human beings who are listening and you're not going to get that with a lot of people. You know, Rush Limbaugh, as right-winged as he is, you know what, he's phenomenal at radio. Yeah. Like, he is impeccable because he's a shit steward. 
And <laughs> he knows the ins and outs. He knows the triggers. He knows the, the placement. He knows. And he's a storyteller. Yeah, exactly. He might be full of that story. He might be full of shit. But guess yeah. what? He'll weave an incredible story. It's why yeah. Alex Jones isn't he, that guy. He can't hang. No. He really can't. He can't. Alex Alex Jones is pure spectacle, and it just it wears thin. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. You guys mentioned Channel 4 earlier. What? What cumulated to for that opportunity to come up for you guys? Uh, the best decision and the worst decision of my life. I uh, was working with broadcast Hall of Famer Craig Worth. Uh, he's been on Channel 4 off and on for 40 years. Yep. He's got a show on ABC Good For Utah now. Uh, worth watching. Worth, worth watching. Every Sunday night, you can find it on their website. And he just he's got rooms full of film and tape that he's shot over the years and he just takes you on a little history lesson of charlie square or what have you i mean dude, the guy's brilliant that's wonderful like, it's my favorite segment i, I still wouldn't watch it be where i am in tv if it wasn't for him and i i have a lot of uh resentment towards him and how casual and laissez-faire he was but there's this other part of me that's like man this guy spent two years with me and showing me the old ways of television. And so when it became intern time, you know, in college, you've got to ha- do an internship in whatever field you're in. I got, he was like, oh, go to KUED Channel 7 PBS, the PBS network. Um, it's at the University of Utah. It's not affiliated with the University of Utah, but it's on their campus. It's a federal funded PBS you right, know, yeah. public broadcast. And so if you become an intern there, you get an iMac and you get a couple thousand dollars worth of editing gear, you know, whatever it is. And then I I had just started working with the Pac-12 network. I was kind of shadowing, but I was working. I was working and not getting paid. I don't I still don't know how that happened, but it did happen. And uh, one of the guys on that freelance team was a reporter and journalist at ABC4. He goes, come work, with, come work for me. You're awesome. I didn't know how awful of a man this man was, like, turned out to be. But at the time, I was like, I was talking to my dad. I was like, well, do I go to PBS or do I go to ABC News? Dad's like, go to ABC. Like, that's ABC television. It's like, Utah's oldest television station. First television network. Yep. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go. And so I applied for an internship, but one thing I had been routinely hearing about internships is how much companies fucking hate interns and how often interns fail in broadcasting because they go around and they'll drive around with a journalist or a photog and they don't talk to them and they don't learn anything or they get caught doing website updates because no one's going to teach them. And so I kind of had this in my head. I was like, well, I'm too fat and ugly to become a reporter. But whatever, like, this is funny. This is Sasha Bloom, who had been in so much trouble in my lifetime. I'm going to go work in a fucking newsroom. Like, it was all a big joke to me. Like, it, it didn't make sense to me. And there's things I won't talk about on air about when I was a younger man, but I got in a lot of trouble, you know. And so going through the court system to being able to watch the court system was really inter- not even just watching, but being able to go file on their ass and being able to go into a courtroom with a media badge and sit down and be like, how the fuck do you like this goatee, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I went to ABC, and but I was like, I'm going to work in engineering. And they go, well, we don't have an internship in engineering. And I go, well, I'm a 4.0 student. You can find one. Because like, you can kind of do that when you have yeah. a really high GPA. You're like, and, you know, that you got other companies wanting you. And so they did. And the next day, I'm able to turn off the servers and move a satellite and fit and fixing a router and master control, um, ABC's master control where you can catch a news feed from anywhere in the world. I was in, um, master control during the Boston bombing, the marathon bombing. And I'm seeing all the live feeds of the cameras with blood shooting out of knees and a woman running around with a missing arm and, and it's like, why is this not on television? Like, oh, well, we can't do it. I was there when Barack Obama got hacked, and in the lower thirds on the running Chiron was 
the the White House had been invaded by zombies. <laughs> and every ABC outlet throughout the world had to fucking cut it. Like, it got hacked. Yeah. And the code was 911. That was the code to get into ABC's master control oh system. Gosh. No one thought about hacking. Yeah. No one, it, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I'm watching Barack Obama give a fucking house, and underneath is crawling. The White House been, has been invaded by zombies. And then they couldn't get rid of it. Like, it was <laughs> hacked. Yeah. It was and, taken out of their control. And so they, they had to bleed up the Chiron to get rid of it. You know, they had to move it up and and use the camera angles differently and push everything up a little bit. And that's why I love broadcasting for those moments for when a producer doesn't put in a sports package, right. And you get to watch the sport anchor fucking fail at his job miserably and watch him get completely spun out of control. And then knowing as soon as he goes to commercial, they're fucked. Like that was my favorite thing in the world. Like there's a man named Tyler Gibbons. Who's, one of the best broadcasters I've ever met. He works at for RSL now. And we would do our news meetings right after every news. You know, you'd do the 4 o'clock news, and then you'd have a 7- to 10-minute camera meeting. And I'd, you know, I'd be this young intern engineer, and I'd be watching the news, and Tyler would scream at everybody, and then I would scream at everybody. And I'm a fucking intern. Like, this is the greatest thing in the fucking world. <laughs> like, you're telling me I can tell Brent Hunsecker to go fuck himself at, in a camera meeting. Or, you know, I can tell my news director, why is, you know, why is this this way? And why is it this way? And you guys are completely full of shit. And it, all the while, I had no idea what I was doing. Like, it, it was a beautiful thing. You had a seat at the table. And they, they listened to you. I still have a seat yeah. at that table. Yeah, you definitely. You definitely. You've carved your seat at the, that table. I remember when you used to lose it about the, uh, the, the, the TV in the background right behind oh, the... Oh, yeah, uh, I still yeah, do. Right behind the center shot. Yeah. I, yeah uh, so, you know, behind the great Kim Fisher, sometimes you'll see a TV monitor on behind her. Right. A big blue spot. And I used to... It used to fucking piss me off. I mean, I had... We had this one assistant news director, and he was about the dumbest fucking man you've ever met. And every day I'd go to him, hey, why is this on? Oh, I forgot, man. You're the news director. Yeah. How do you forget? <laughs> and it, it's that thing and that we see as there's a lot of people, because it's not a well-paying job anymore. Radio's not a good-paying job, unless you're Howard Stern or Rush Limbaugh. Uh, there's a, it's mostly I heart people that really make that incredible amount of money. The, the names you know are the ones that are making the money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Charlemagnes and the Opies mm -hmm. and, you know, those types of people. All right. But because there's not a lot of money, the really smart human beings don't go into broadcasting. And so what you get is a lot of C-plus talent with A looks, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's not going to get better anytime soon. Like, you're never... A Walter Conkright, we're not going to see in news again because if he's that passionate and he's that talented, he's going to go with Vice or... Yeah, just do it themselves. I was just going to say exactly that. Gonna like, we're going to see it, but just not in that formal setting, like, not in the TV world. Like, it's it's definitely progressed over to a more digital... They're going to be the type of man, woman, or other who joins the Utah Podcast Network com or start something on YouTube, and they're going to... And in 20 years, they're going to be like, who the fuck's this guy? Why is he? Like, how did this happen? Like, you know, like the Young Turks, Lee Camp, something like that. Yeah, yeah, but they're not good. Like, they're popular. I get it, but they're not good. It's not a good production. They should be embarrassed, like to have that type of. Are you talking about the, the overall quality of like yeah. their set pieces and yeah, stuff? Yeah, like. Uh... But see, that's what you get with a more corporate, like standard news. Yeah, but if you look at the Adam Carollas. Oh, the one percenting of podcasting. Yeah, uh, but he's really good. He is really good, and it's not that he's good; it's a good production. Yeah, I, yeah, I think his content sucks, but um, he's he was that guy that was a B minus TV star, a C plus radio guy, and now is the number you know has the Guinness record for podcasts. Like that's a cool story. Mm. 
Yeah, well, it's funny too because I used well, well, he is a big reason I enjoyed radio too, though, because I used to listen to Love Line when I worked nights at the post he office, it. and I, I would go in and listen, and then I would listen to old episodes. I would like torrent old episodes and find them and just listen to them. It's still listenable. It is old shit. It holds up. It really does. Like uh, uh, I remember, like that to me was the fun side of radio. That to me was more appealing. Like I never really, I enjoy the news. Like I, I passionately read the news, but I never wanted to be a journalist. Like, I did it in high school, and I enjoyed it for a little bit. I did uh, our student television news. But I, I, I enjoy the personality aspect of things. And, and Adam Carolla, listening to Adam Carolla do his thing, it, just, it was fascinating. It was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like I love that magic side of uh, broadcasting as well. Like, I, I know we think a lot about, you know, like, the erudite, important informative news but i also just enjoy like personalities like charlemagne the god like that's one of my favorite people <laughs> in the world like I, I love listening to the breakfast club uh, which is uh based out of new york is it sirius xm uh i think they're iheart power 1051 yeah i heart i believe they're yeah and there's a handful of people in this building that are of that quality mm -hmm. you know in different ways but they're they're artists i think radio i think broadcasting is not it is an art form that the, there's nothing else but being an art form, but it's been sabotaged. That's why I love having this podcast network is I can turn down people offering me money to um, advertise. I've done it a couple of times. No, mm -hmm. fuck you. Cause it, it, it doesn't, it's not genuine to what we're trying to do. Who am I hurting? I'm paying for this all myself. Like I, Dylan hook, you hooked me up Dylan um, by not charging me so much money for the website. But outside of that, there's no one I'm responsible to. None. I'm not. Re I'm responsible to the talent on the show, but to an extent, because I don't ask much from you guys. It's like show up, record, and we're good from that. Yep. Like I, yep. You can send me a blog, send me a photo. I'm gonna get mad at you if you don't tweet about it. And if I have to start asking you daily, we're gonna have a problem. And see, that's where my problems come in with uh, some of the people I have on my podcast network because it's like, dude, you're getting a quarter million dollar studio. I call myself a world-class audio editor because I'm pretty damn close. There's not much that I can't do. I, I think I've earned that right. I, I haven't met anyone better. I in, have. In well, well. Uh, I have. Like, uh, there's a guy and there's a couple guys in iHeart that, you know, you know, they're they're phenomenal. There's a couple guys at Broadway that, you know. Well, Broadway I'm talking about specifically for podcasting right now. Like, oh, no, I've, no. I, I haven't. Like, your work with podcasting is fantastic. Yeah, it, it is. Um, but it's painstaking. I guys literally spend twenty hours a week editing shows, and I don't. That's something as Den, Dylan as my webmaster. I don't think you have any understanding of that. Like, you know, it's like when you're emailing me about this stuff. I was like, "Fuck, dude, I've got to get this edit done." Yeah. And I've gotten better at it um, in terms of not like because not editing literally every second of every show. Because you know, I, I was talking to my one of my good buddies, and he's like, "Dude, they don't deserve that kind of time." And that's no offense to Marcus or Guy or Johnny or you. It's like I just I can't give an hour and forty minute edit on a fifty minute show. I just it, and no one's gonna care. Like like Johnny used to have this problem with me at All You Radio is I'd spend six hours editing a three hour show, and he's like, dude, no one's hearing what you're hearing. You know, there's a very few audio files that are gonna. But then I went back and listened. <laughs> And because I have the raw footage, because yeah. my dad would help. My dad would record it, and I'd send it over to you. When they took our recording away, because they were trying to get us not to record. And uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to sneak it back to him. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I listened, and it's a significant difference. Stunning. There's no ums. There's no buts. There's no dead space. There's no flubs. There's no. It's perfect, seamless. Like it, it's, yeah, it's seamless. Yeah, some of those early ones were little works of art. You know, I've kind of pulled back quite a bit because I'm incredibly busy and yeah. I'm doing, what are we, we got 12 shows on the network? Yeah. A couple aren't really active right now, but, you know, it's, I don't have time to do this. So, and I don't mind them anymore because I, I really feel like we've built up our team too. And I've spent a lot of time helping you with your show and helping Johnny with your show and helping myself. And I, it concerns me a little bit that, our podcast network's not a household name. I thought kind of about a year and a half, two years, we'd be bigger than we are. But we're really big, but I want to have a bigger platform because bigger platform means I can bring – I can buy cameras. I can – because there's a lot of stuff, Dylan, and you can keep asking. I know we 
kind of just been steamrolling here, but yeah. there's a lot left undone with Utah Podcast Network.com. Definitely. Girl, I'm making it amazing. I have faith in that. Well, it's amazing now. Just it's. I think we're going to see a lot of growth this year. I've got some ideas I wanted to talk to you about. I really want to bring journalism back to old Ute Radio. Yeah. I, I really, like, Johnny and I for years have been talking about, man, we got to go to Utah AIDS Foundation. we got to go to Planned Parenthood. I mean, I could book any senator um, up on the Hill tomorrow, and we don't do it. Because I have all, I for three years up at the U, I, my main beat was the LGBT beat and covering the legislative sessions. I know them all. I have all their personal emails. I have phone numbers. I don't use them. I mean, Johnny and I have such good relationships all over town. Mm -hmm. I can go anywhere and get an interview, and we don't fucking do it. And it drives me up the wall. And the reason why it doesn't happen is we have no time. We're both very busy. It's tough. And as much as I hate to say that, I don't have time to go hang out at Pioneer Park, you know? And I want to. Where's the time? You you know, so... But I really want to get more passionate and not so much to make a name about my, about myself, but there's no one doing it right in Utah. I, yeah. I I don't see it in any podcasts that are doing the conversations right. No. And I don't even care if other podcasts are offended, frankly. Um, obviously, I mean, I guess there's this war with me and other fucking podcasters. I don't give a shit. Like you're not that good. If you were that good, you'd be on my network. Bottom <laughs> we, line. We, we've been facing hate since the beginning. So yeah. It's bottom fine. fucking line. Yeah. If, a show was that good in town, they'd be on my network because no one's going to turn down the studio. And no one's going to turn down having a producer. Um, you know, and that's... I, wanna, I want an authenticity to Utah Podcast Network that's unparalleled. Um, I want Marcus to be able to talk about whatever he wants. I want Jason Harvey to have... I mean, he's had people with AIDS and cancer, like, level four cancer and he's had a senator dumb jason harvey like doing incredible fucking work <laughs> who would have thought yeah, jason I, know, right? I don't think you're <laughs> jason is awesome i love oh, jason. he's a beautiful yeah. man. he's wonderful I but love it's you. like yeah. if you think about three years ago and i tell you that jason harvey's gonna be and having a conversation with the senator about marijuana no you wouldn't no. have believed it no but we 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 were able to book it, you know. The guests that have walked through this door mm-hmm. in KU, unbelievable. Emmy winners, Grammy winner. We had a yeah. Grammy winner. We've had three. We've had an NFL player. Yeah. We've had Brock- the Black Klansman. We had him. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest story. I don't know if you ever heard. <laughs> I, I saw the episode story. in the feed. <laughs> the but, uh, Black Klansman. You all need to check it out. He was a black police officer in Denver, and he infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan in Colorado and became a verified Ku Klux Klan man as a black cop. You can't make that <laughs> shit up. And it was about the most uncomfortable interview <laughs> I've ever done because he was that type of black man that seemed like he hated white people. There's a handful of black yeah. men like that. And you, I think it's a generational thing, too. It's like oh, yeah, he's a little he, bit older. He's a 70 year old man. Grew up in a different world. You know? um, and I was higher than fuck. But, <laughs> and he probably knew that. Because <laughs> he's a cop. Because he's a cop. A high level detective cop. Yeah. But we went an hour and a half with him. And it was one of the better interviews we've ever done because of how hard it was to break him. You know, that that's that's one of the beautiful things, too, about broadcasting is, for instance, we just had Tori Wilson on our show, and she's probably the greatest athlete in Utah uh, collegiate history. I mean, yeah. she's right up there. She's right up yeah. there with Alex Smith with a bunch of people, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking, any, anyone at BYU, you yeah. know. And, a decorated uh, athlete, you know, and, and I was thinking about that episode because it really felt like like the old ways, the way it used to be. Yeah, you know? and uh, to so much to the point that I was so nervous, and I've listened to that show four times now, and I think Johnny had just asked a question, and I asked the same question right on top of it because I was so nervous, and but having this mold, which is another human being and having an hour to talk to him. And by the end of it, it being a beautiful conversation and it's starting from just uncomfortability and everyone tuning in and being like, 
maybe I'm going to turn this off. But you, you get to watch that mold and putty being built into a great show. And, you know, if I ever end up in prison or something like that, knowing that I got to watch those types of moments um, of people that are just being like, like I, it doesn't even make sense to me, like how Rick Aaron's on my network or how Keith Stubbs was on my network for a time. Like, like I'm just this dumb fucking car wash kid. Like, you know, and I know that there's a lot of more people in Utah media that have a bigger name with you and have more of a professional name. You know, I'm pretty low on the chain, but just to uh, be able to call Big Buddha my friend is pretty dope. Like, to post on Instagram that his car is filthy is fucking awesome. <laughs> like, I deleted it because I didn't want to... I didn't want to, you know, stir the yeah. pot. <laughs> oh, I just went right at him. I saw his car it was filthy because it had been <laughs> snowing all morning and he'd been driving around the state. But, dude, your car's filthy. Go wash it. And I can do that. That's funny. You know, knowing that I could call Joey Diaz and go see him and Joe Rogan is kind of cool. You know, it's going to get better. Like, this network's going to fucking kill it. and Or it's going to kill me, one or the other, <laughs> you know. Hopefully it's the first one. So we love you. So well, some would think the second. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think the second. I, I want to thank you for this incredible opportunity. Yeah, Cause, dude. Yeah, because we, you know, we tried that other podcast I was on for a while, and that. Uh, yeah, that was not a that was that, that, that was a mess that thankfully that, imploded. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah, what, so what happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony Toscano and CC Chambers. Um, you, I, I, you've been here since the beginning, Dylan. He's my webmaster and kind of, yeah, comedian Andy Gold, um, connected us. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And then and, we uh, started rolling from there with. You so know. you, he came up to me. We had a bunch of shows, five, four or five shows, and we were building and it was growing and it was funny. And you're like, yeah, I know this guy Tony Toscano. I was like, I know Tony Toscano from ABC Four. Yep. And we met at his Iggy's in Sandy and. I left the whole thing with, oh, Tony and Dylan are doing a show. This is going to be fucking awesome, right? Right, yep. And so you guys show up a couple of weeks later, and CC Chambers there, who's a hack comic. Like, she's a liar hack and a manipulator. manipulator. I, yeah, she didn't and have a good reputation. She's the reason why I ended up having to leave KU Radio, because they let me stay on like a year and a half after I graduated because we had great numbers and we were selling advertising and I was training students and we were crushing it. We period. Were crushing it until Andy Gold and Christian Piper showed up and spent an hour and a half eviscerating CC Chambers on my show. And we got like 30 emails sent not to me, but to student media about how we're supposed to be in an inclusive environment. And here we are with this single mom. Um, getting basically told she's a fat cunt on student radio for an hour and a half and me encouraging it and being a bad, unprofessional. What I should have done is just thrown a commercial. And But no, Andy's awesome and Christian's awesome and it was hilarious. And, <laughs> and so I had all this rep going with her and then she shows up and I'm supposed to produce her. Like, fuck that. Like, she was an enemy of mine. And... The show was doomed. It was doomed from day one. Yeah. And it took me a year and a half to undo that. And because I didn't have the nuts or the manhood or um, the managerial skills of getting her off the show, you know, and it's one of the problems is, you know, you guys are doing it for free and I get that. And it's, if it's difficult for me, it's difficult for you. It's difficult for Tony. It's difficult. Difficult for all these amazing, talented broadcasters that we've had. And I, I like Tony. I, I don't have a problem with him personally. Um, but it wasn't the show I signed. It was you and Tony. Yeah. And it really pissed me off that it wasn't you and Tony. And so every time I walked into this room, there were six people with four mics. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? It's why bad radio. Why yeah, you is can't do that. CC here? You know, and I... And, and, it's, so the show ended, and it basically ended, and I did it the wrong way. Instead of telling Tony she's got to go, I no-showed him. We were supposed to go up to Park City and help him broadcast. And it just, I was like, no, dude. Like, Johnny and I, are, we're going to go hang out with an AP beat reporter of Sundance. Oh, uh, yeah. And kill it. You know? Good times. 
I just, you know, and I, I, I don't know why I went on that tangent, but that kind of stuff's never going to happen again on Utah Podcast Network. Oh, we'll you know. snap it in the bud. Or... But I, I think you yeah. got a great show. I mean, you get to do it with Steve Hatch and... And Andrea Peterson. And, you know, they're, I think it's... A, they're both incredible. And they were the first show. ones to to jump into the ring when I was put out on Facebook, you know, who like to co-host. Me. They were... And you're one of the the great pleasures I take because I think that when you started that you not I'm not sure you had a right to do podcasting because you were so uncomfortable with it. You you know, you're you're kind of an introverted guy and for you to have long uh form conversations is something you had to learn. Yeah. And I think that it's opened you up in a lot of really neat ways and I love being able to help you with that and I love learning from you you know, uh, with what you teach me with it stuff. So it's a win-win situation. And with Johnny, we're so polarly different, um, religiously, ethnic, ethnic, ethnically, ethnically, morally, spiritually, we don't have anything in common really. Um, occasionally we'll agree that Joe Rogan's a good podcast host once in a while, but it's very (laughs) episode specific, (laughs) but Fuck, man, he's one of my best friends. If yeah. I died I and my son had to live with him, I would know that he'd raise my son to be a good man. Yes. Yeah. I, we, we didn't talk about it, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'll say yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh... No, I, I'd delete your internet history. I've thought about that. Like, if you died, I would break into your house. Number one, to get all the hard drives of the show, all, all the CDs. <laughs> I know you burned them on CD. I, I actually have a I know you've done that. CD. I know that because I know that's how th- – that's why I love Sasha Bloom right there because he burns everything on CD. You are a rare treasure in the world. Like I, I meet people every day. I meet ton, like that's my job. I meet people. I've never met anyone like Sasha Bloom, anyone ever. If I could do it on audio cassette, I'd have it on audio cassette too. But <laughs> I still wish I had a Walkman. Yeah, where are the Walkmans? You can probably track them down somewhere. Dude, I'm not <laughs> wearing a Walkman, but I love I loved having a Discman, and I love. Me That's, too. I loved having CDs in my hands, and I loved riding 12 miles to go buy Ice Cube and NWA as an 11 year old white kid. Like, you can't, kids can't do that anymore. Where are you going to go buy the Aesop Rocky CD? Where are you going to go buy, where are you going to buy, uh, it's hard. Jim Norton's, uh, CD? You yeah. know, you, it's all virtual. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And even in the physical stores, it's like that week or that month's releases, and then they're, you know, or it's heavily edited if it's at, like, Target or Walmart or something. And then you're just like, ugh. I uh, work at iHeartRadio in Salt Lake City. Uh, it's a prestigious gift in my life. Like, I value being an employee here. And I've been offered real serious jobs here. You know, producing jobs. There there were ways for me that I could have moved up here a while ago. Now I don't have those because I've said no too many times. And I own that. But the reason why is because of the Internet. Why am I going to spend a career in radio when the internet is the new broadcasting forum? Right? Let's get on this monkey. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I wrestle with every day for sure. Because in 20 years, I can't guarantee that iHeartRadio is around, that Clear Channel is around. But you know what I can guarantee you is that the Joe Rogan experience will be around in 20 years. I, I had an intern. I, I work for Cumulus. I had an intern today, uh, just on Friday ask me, you know, like, aren't you worried about working in the future of radio? And, you know, and I told her, like, you know, like radio, they've always said radio was going to go out of business. They said it when records came out, when Walkmans, when when DVDs, everything. But, you know, and the truth is this medium is changing and it is like it's and it's it, it's transforming. I don't know if it'll ever permanently go away, but it's definitely changed a lot since just in the past five years even. But, you know, iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia is the number one biggest broadcast company in the world well, just it's, the app alone is a, a huge It's the feat. number one app in the world. That's yeah. why Clear Channel went to iHeartRadio was because their iHeartRadio app <laughs> fucking <laughs> became the number one app in the world. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is this let's rebrand ourselves because it makes sense. Like when we changed from Earhole Media to Utah Podcast Network. Yeah, let's yeah, we're killing it. But let's change it to make it more user friendly. Yeah, there's a specific reason to rebrand and Radio stations do it all the time, and they flip formats all the time, and it really sucks because people get fired. But I think radio could be here forever if they if they threw a lot of their people that they hire out. You know, get rid of uh, the statisticians and get rid of 
the formatting and just hire really funny and smart people. Yeah, yeah, go more personality based, less crunching numbers, measuring metrics. Yeah. You know, like oh, you know, like this six year old girl in Poughkeepsie, like versus this person over here. Like it's just all data, math, and numbers. And, and there's- I think they forget the old school. You don't have to sign a contract with Sony and Columbia to get musicians on your show. You're the fucking radio. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> people will give you CDs to play. Yeah. Like, it's never going away. And so for it to become cor- – corporatization killed radio, I in my opinion. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And we've had great some great stations locally that, you know, are gone because – Formats got flipped and people got moved around. Or it but, directly uh, affected me. But yeah. the <laughs> great, the great broadcasters don't. Frankie doesn't leave. Bill Allred doesn't leave. Bill Riley's not going to leave the Utes. You know something not like anymore. that. Not anymore. No, but he's kind yeah. of a newer guy. Like yeah. he's only been in market ten years. Like he's yeah. becoming a broadcast hall of famer. Like we're what we're watching with Bill Riley. He's the voice of Utah football and RSL and uh, Utah men's basketball team. We're, we're watching a brilliant broadcast career like unfold live and yeah it's current fucking awesome like he will be on our show um this summer i know that and that's really cool to say is like yeah. i get i get to not only do i get to talk to bill riley every day i get to interview him in a couple of weeks or whenever johnny books it yeah and that's cool like so you know i don't really know what we accomplished today but no we learned about you guys I, I think it's important that we talk about the, the format flip and the things that change, too, because, you know, I, I was directly involved with that when I was working with Broadway. You know, I was part of Mix 105. Well, I was part of Mix 107.9, and then we switched to a better signal, Mix 105.1. We had to rebrand that. And then, you know, the station a year and a half later went through another rebranding, and, you know, uh, they cleared house, you know, and I, I was one of those people who was cleared out. And, I mean, in this industry, things can change just like that. You know, and you sign up and, and it, while it's like there's a great amount of privilege, there's also, you know, you can have that trepidation and know that, you know, I might not be here in six months. I might not be here in a year. Because they fire you for stupid shit. It's not like another corporate job. They Where you have to have a reason to be fired. Like, you know, it's just it's arbitrary. Yeah. It's 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 it is what it is. You can have a award winner on, you know, for a, almost the whole time that he was there and. The next day he's gone because they're like one of the great do... things is radio stations play really shitty music. Yeah. And then they wonder why no one listens. And so they'll spend a hundred grand on a great broadcaster and they'll make he, she or other play horrible music and then they fire them and then they have to move markets. And, and they're sitting there like, why am I getting fired when my program director is playing the shittiest music ever made and you wonder why people don't listen and then they still play that shitty music but they rehire someone new after they've destroyed a life it makes absolutely no sense no it doesn't i I don't listen to the radio anymore when i got my new car it came with sirius xm we Mm. liked it so much that we didn't we didn't we you know after the free period of having it we we signed up you pay 10 bucks a month? 10 to 15, something See, like that. See, there's some things about Sirius Satellite that really piss me off is I don't know why you're fiddling in space with broadcasting. Like, put it on the fucking internet. Like, let's go. Um, you could save hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and <laughs> just do it through the internet. You don't have to have two satellites over planet Earth doing God knows what they're tracking and because I'm sure the radio is a very small part of that satellite that's up there. Like It's part of something yeah. bigger. Try driving under a bridge. See how your satellite radio oh, does. No, I pull into my carport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm grooving. That's pulling. bullshit. Yeah. Like, as a professional young broadcaster, I don't know how I could work for a company that you drive under a bridge. Like, if you're in the Lincoln Tunnel in New York, what the fuck are you supposed to do? Yeah, in traffic. Oh, oh dude, if I'm it defeats 50, the whole purpose. If I'm 50 minutes into a Jim Norton and Sam Roberts show, and I have to go under a tunnel for 10 minutes, like I can't imagine what young Howard Stern, 29, 38 year old <laughs> Howard Stern, would say to 60 year old Howard Stern as he's listening to him go under a tunnel and he goes dark for 10 minutes. Yeah, all shit would fucking get ruined. But now he's too rich and he doesn't care. 
Yeah. But I'm sure he does. I'm sure those meetings have happened endlessly with him and other broadcasters. But he, he wouldn't be Howard Stern if he wasn't if he didn't have that level of detail for sure. Yeah, and I think podcasting is really a revolutionary thing because you can download it and save it on your phone, so you're not streaming it when you're driving. Yeah, like that's you, what I do. Yeah, yeah, and you can't do that with Pandora. You can't do that with any of these other platforms. You're still using your data signal. But with podcasting, it's on demand. It's saved on demand. It's it's also why I like radio, though, because I don't have to use my data to listen to stuff. Because I, I'm fortunate enough to be working on radio stations where I genuinely enjoy the music. Like, I don't have to lie about that. You know, like, I, I work for, you know, a top 40 station and an alternative rock and a uh, classic modern rock station. So it's great that I can, like, listen to those mu- like that. I, like, for my job, I have to listen to the music all day. So for me, it's still fun and exciting. And, and I think, like, a lot of people forget there's a lot of good music that you can get for free. That's subjective. <laughs> but it's usually buried in the shit. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I couldn't do Johnny's job. Um, I couldn't do – I couldn't work for a rock station. Like, there's – you know, we've had a bunch of – we've had Hooker on. We've had Shane on. We've had a bunch of rock DJs on. And I don't like the music. So, you know – if I'm going to be doing breaks into cream, well, it's going to get perverted. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tee hee, <laughs> you know, and, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do a show where I had to talk about, I, where I had to introduce Bieber and, uh, Miley Cyrus. Like I couldn't do it. There's no, I would not be happy. I don't think it'd be a good show. Um, I don't think if I worked, on the Rush Limbaugh station, I'd be good at it because I don't agree with the politics. So but that, you follow, we always follow our passions too, though, and you know that's just not your passion. Like that's why you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't take a job like that, I even mean, if they offered it to you. And I've been, I've been and offered you to apply. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah, you have. Hey, there's a reporting job for Karen Harris. Why didn't you sign? It? No, like what am I? Wh- no, like what am I going to talk about? How uh, gay the transgender people are and. How God hates them and report from the right wing side of it. No, I, I'm a people person. I'm team people. Like, through and through, team human. Hashtag it. Reaching people. Yeah. Reaching people. Reaching and touching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's always got to ruin it. He's always got to make it. I love it. How you make me uncomfortable still. Five years later, he you still, still do it. sit on my lap, Dylan. <laughs> you I, call it ruin it. I call it the cherry on top. Yeah. <laughs> Becca used to sit on my lap like with shorts on and no panties, and this guy won't sit on my lap. Rude. I'm wearing sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Old Ute Radio. O L U T E Radio. O- old guy. Old guy radio. Old guy radio. <laughs> Download us. Um, sometimes you can find us under O U R Podcast, our podcast. But Old Ute Radio, please. Uh, we have some really cool guests. Like, if you love broadcasting, if you're passionate about media, uh, we focus a lot on it. And we've had phenomenal comics on our show. We've had uh, Dwayne Perkins a couple yeah. times. We've had Joey Diaz. Uh, Robert Kelly. Robert Kelly. Rich Voss. He stubs. I, he, he stubs. He stubs a yeah. big comic. We've had, I think the only Utah, non-Utah guy we've missed is uh, Ryan Hamilton. So, I don't think we'll ever get him. But no, I've tried. He, like, you wouldn't even do Opie and Anthony, so... Um, yeah definitely check it out i mean uh you can also find out a lot about you know how to develop a career in media we we go right into it we talk about what works what doesn't work we we explain we we interview people who have succeeded at what they like we interview people who are good at what they do and we find out how they do it yeah kim fisher nadia crow uh craig Craig worth Worth. randall carlisle dude those randall carlisle uh, do you know who randall carlisle yeah channel four yeah Yeah, Yeah. those are great episodes he's been uh anchor for ever 40 50 years but he started in Motown doing radio, <laughs> yeah. And he went to Kent State during the sh- tear gassing and shooting, and was reporting as this dumb Detroit kid. And he, you know, he broke uh, Jimmy or John Mo- Jim Morrison dying, and there's just that it's, it's shit. The you, wealth of knowledge, and you're not going to get those interviews from anyone else, and you know, and get people to open up like that because a lot of people don't interview like that, and. I think we have a really cool interview system. You mm-hmm. know, not always perfect. It's never no interview. Most yeah, interviewing. It doesn't matter how good the hosts are. It's all guest related. So if you have a guest that, you know, doesn't give it's you tough. those angles to take from it, you're always going to struggle a little bit. But 
it, it, there's an ebb and a flow. There's a, a, a dance, a dynamic, and you know, I feel like like we we've developed a rhythm over the years that I. I I personally, I, I find it fascinating every time I re-listen to one of our episodes. Yeah, it takes you back. It's, uh, yeah, you guys have a great back and forth. You you know, read each other. And we have a know. safety net of humor. And, you know, Johnny knows that he can completely destroy me on air. Right? <laughs> Knock yourself the fuck out, yeah. dude. Like, I'm a big punching bag. We, we, we filled a lot. Of, the reason I don't do it anymore, it's not because I, I don't want to. It's just that uh, we, we filled so many hours. <laughs> we have so much backlogged that I'm afraid, like, I'm just going <laughs> to. I love I've got, it. I've got a clip that's in. I've, I've got a folder for OUR, and I've got. 13 or 14 folders in it and one of the folders is unused promos and it's literally labeled white hair and diabetes <laughs> and it's a segment of me getting white hair and being diabetic you know it, it's fucking brilliant i love it and uh you know those are the fruity things. pebbles uh dum-dums i'll never forget that you remember fruity pebbles yeah john cena yeah, yeah. I, i've got promos like because we had to do promos for ku where Johnny's doing this whole promo and he's calling himself Sasha Bloom and me Johnny McKinnon <laughs> without even fucking realizing it. It's, it's gold. <laughs> it's oh. the dumbest shit in the world. I I I love doing this. I I love. I mean, I've been doing it now. Oh, how long have we been doing this? Like it's four gotta, years. Got to be four or five years. Four or right? five years. Two thousand twelve. Dude, I remember coming here when it was Clear Channel. You know, and uh, uh, recording the Geek Show with uh, Ryan Bennett, yeah. Geek Revolution Radio, and I, I remember just being blown away just the fact that we're in a studio recording, and you know now that we're here and the, the, we've been here for so long, like I, I every time I drive up here, I'm always grateful. I was just telling Sarah on the ride up, you know, like like I, I've been coming to this building, you know, for like over four like it's for years. the only reason why um, I never applied to work at iHeart. They called me. And I remember on episode 96 of the Geek Revolution Radio, is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, it's called Dexter. And I was sitting in the exact microphone space I am now. Yep. And I'm watching my two bosses and Johnny who come in here and do the show. And I'm like, why the fuck do they get to do this here? Who the fuck are these guys? They suck. Like, just while I'm on their show. And yeah, he's hating us well on the show. <laughs> in my head, just being, just being a jealous boy. Like, what are they doing? What's I heart? Like, what, what's over there? And you turn around, and I've got a podcast yeah. network out of this studio. Same room. Same room. Same room. A lot of memories. New mics because their mics sucked, and I had to replace them. But yeah, it's it's a ride, Dylan. That I'm not sure I'll ever um, give myself room to enjoy. Unfortunately, I'm not good at that. I I'm not good at uh, patting myself on the shoulders. I'm very hard on myself, which is a major flaw in my life. But it's um, I think that you know what Marcus and Guy and Jason and Johnny and you and even the Orlovitz and Falconers of the world are. I think they're doing pretty awesome things, and I really hope that Utahns and Salt Lakeans start picking up utahpodcastnetwork.com because if there's anything that's genuine in this city it's that network it's our network because it's unfiltered there's no lies if we're missing anything that we should have a right wing show on it and i'm open to it so to any of you redneck (laughs) bible kissing assholes wants a show hit me up who listens to this artist show yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) I, I, That's hilarious. In closing here, because we got to balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, don't forget, you can also follow me at Johnny McKeon uh, on everything, pretty much. J O H N N Y M C K E O N. Yeah, I'm on Power 94.9. Uh, you can also catch me on weekends from 7 to midnight. Um, uh, they, uh, I do that as well. And then, um, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Johnny, for joining us. And where can people find you, Mr. Bloom? Mr. Underscore Bloom on Twitter. Mr. Period bloom. <laughs> what did you look at just now when you were thinking of that? You were just, uh, uh. Are you, are you looking at my breasts? What? I, can't, no, I can't see. But hey. You hate saying, Mr. Underscore Bloom, Mr. Dot Bloom, please hit him up. He loves talking to people on Twitter. So. Is it dot or period? It's Do- dot. It's dot on. Well, I say dot. 
if you say period, I mean, it sounds like I'm on my menstrual cycle. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mi- which, Mr. Is funny, Don- which is why I was laughing. <laughs> like, Mr. Period Blue. <laughs> Shut it up. goes back to your juvenile. Yeah, find him there. First name, period. <laughs> And then uh, Old Ute Radio oh, on Utah Park. Too. Yeah, and Utah Podcast Network. That's where yeah. you can find us. 168 shows. Yeah. So, And if there's demand, I'll put on the first 30, but I think it's safer for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 3 is one of my favorites okay, of will, all time. Um, this Tiki week, Barber. I still remember. All right, I'm, I'm, this, not gonna, I'm this done. This week, I will... For you, Dylan, I will release uh, the kissing episode. <gasps> okay. That was on... Was that a Halloween, too? Yeah. Like, was it... It was, it was, it was, uh, no, that was, uh, 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 the Valentine's. Val- that's right. It was February 14th. Yeah. All right. So we'll do a throwback Thursday this week on that one because it's stunningly embarrassing. And, but we had a good interview about Chapstick, I guess. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So we'll find out together. We'll listen to it together. And I bet it's just fucking embarrassing. <laughs> awesome. You're welcome, Dylan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both. See you guys next time.